The manager walked over to Chen and congratulated him with a surprised look on his face as he managed to pass the dungeon trials on his own. All of Chen's dungeon earnings would be transferred to his account, and today his trials were over, and he could finally return home. It was the manager of the Adventurers Association from In City. Chen was confident that there shouldn't be any problems. After all, the staff of the association would handle it. In fact, the manager had recently received a death certificate from the hospital, and all the information matched Chen's. So he came to check it personally and confirm the information. The screen showed all of Chen's information from his name to the cause and place of death. The man who was called dead was still alive. After finishing the conversation, he ordered the employee to go back to work and she had nothing left but to do what he said. The phone screen lit up and a ringing sounded. He picked up the phone and decided to find out why the manager had bothered him. This man was interested in the news about the bodies in the dungeon. After all, they were using them to improve the rewards in the low-level dungeon. The manager said that the guild and the media were still closely monitoring their actions. But despite the fact that there were so many immobilized bodies in the dungeon, no rewards had been improved. The dungeon was at level 15. But the manager couldn't seem to figure out how Chen had survived. So he informed the master that it seemed like someone had gotten the reward for going through the dungeon. The master was furious. He couldn't believe that someone had managed to get out of the double dungeon alive. The manager confirmed his words and said that he had just seen this person with his own eyes. And on top of that, he was also able to go through the association dungeon and defeat the boss by himself. They made the decision to take care of the incident. Chin's body was in a lot of pain, and he had received quite a few wounds. He expected to receive a very large reward for passing the dungeon. The girl said that according to the rules, all the loot from the dungeon belonged to the association, but the person who passed the dungeon was entitled to a small portion of the profits. He received a small amount of money, but he didn't expect more in the initial stages. The hardest thing now was to get good equipment and pump up his level. Then suddenly a system window appeared in front of him. Chin was very surprised. The system windows told about the completed tasks and at the bottom, Mr. Yama was thanking Chin for his luck. Chen was completely shocked by what he saw. His reward was a stretching pill. It has the ability to change the meridians of the body and greatly increase physical abilities. Feather scrutinized the system window and tried to see if it was really something worthwhile. And Chin confirmed that it was because this reward would help him easily overcome the biggest obstacle for beginning adventurers. The highest level of adventurer in the country right now was 45. Very few people can achieve such a result at the moment. In fact, after the fifth level, the promotion becomes more and more difficult. When the monster materials are high, they become very rare and powerful. During this period, seekers must rely only on equipment to be able to defeat monsters. And low-ranked seekers are at a disadvantage due to the claims of the association and guild. And that's the only reason why they have to rely on training, because by training they increase their fitness. Many do this because they can barely get the necessary equipment to level 10. Training a professional seeker is very expensive, but Chen was confident that after one or two dungeons, he would be able to reach level 5. And this reward was very important to him. And then suddenly as it turned out, there was more than one reward. A few days later, in the Adventurer's Archive of X City, it was possible to find out all the data about the adventurers. Chin wanted to know everything about what was going on, and he tried to find something on the internet, but the feather at that time only did that and prevented him. Chin did not care, he was very persistent, and did not give up what he wanted. This window described all the data about Chin. But the last comment scared Chin very much. He decided to put away worries about this comment for now, and after checking the data, 
he realized that it was identical to the panel in the game. The member of the underworld thought that Chen lacked training and that he needed to die in order to train. This comment still couldn't get out of Chen's head. Chen's stats were higher than ordinary people, but he still couldn't understand how he could compare to other adventurers. But what did death really mean? Was it really the most important assignment in this class? Chen had a lot of questions in his mind. There are mages that belong to explosive type classes. There are bards who focus on music for support. And whether a dungeon disciple's main focus is doom, this all seemed very strange. The class name for Chen seemed very official, but the skills obtained were so random. After all, they were pulling a lot of mana usage. It was all very strange, for it didn't seem to meet any standards. Suddenly, a sharp blow came at Chen. Pero was angry, for it was only because of him that he was getting better. Chen apologized regretfully. Pero advised Chen to listen to all the information, for this class can control life and death. Chen couldn't believe it, and Pero reminded him of the power of the pen. The pen informed him that he didn't seem strong to Chen, after all Chen hadn't gotten the full set of items yet. After the pen shouted, Chen was very surprised. It seemed to be about the book that the king uses to record human lifelines. It was a true book of life and doom. But it wasn't a surprise to Feather, because he thought that this class was very popular right now. Quill was annoyed that those who mocked the souls of the dead were stealing their customers. Looking at the affirmative Pero, Chin really thought about his words and began to believe that this class could indeed control life and death. Feather continued his story, but suddenly his words turned into some incomprehensible noise. And it seems the reason was that this information had gotten out of the system and Pero was no longer authorized to speak. It wasn't at all clear to Chin why he would have to wait to find out all the information. The guidebook, the system window, and the statistics, these all looked to Chin like elements from a game, but yet they appeared in the real world. Earlier, when Chin was studying the hidden classes, he had also looked at the records of dungeons related to gods. Did someone really enter a dungeon with mythological creatures? But there were no records of a trial. Chin had never seen an adventurer with the system before. He didn't understand why he was the only one who had gained this power. Feather ordered him to keep his voice down, but Chen was lost in his thoughts. He still couldn't understand how such a thing could exist in reality. Pero informed him that if he had them, why would he think about it? After all, not everyone had qualifications that would help in the god trial. But Chen didn't stop talking and continued to ask why he had them. And Feather said that instead of knowing all the information, Chin should focus on improving his strength and skills. Chin was very lonely because he was alone with all the trials, and after removing all the worries, he decided to reach S level because after that he would have some security. After only a few days, the topic of the dungeon was the most interesting topic for the reporters. And if the system didn't appear, no one would ever know about the fights. Chen realized that the people who were behind all of this were very powerful, and if he tried to interfere, he would die again and would not be able to endure such an ordeal. There would be no second chance to get out of death, and the fact that the system had chosen him was a complete stroke of luck. Chen had no choice, he had to become stronger, he was not going to regret the powerlessness that had happened earlier. Chen clarified with the feather about his earlier statement that two people had survived, and he said that he had clearly seen them hiding during the battle, and he didn't know exactly who it could be, because they had escaped before he woke up in the morgue. Chen didn't see any news about the survivors in any of the reports. Apparently the organizers had decided to hide it from everyone. From the pen followed a suggestion to investigate, after all, it could be Chen's friends. The next day, the events are moved to the city hospital of the city of Inn. Chin went to the front desk and introduced himself as a relative of those who had passed through the dungeon a few days ago 
to inquire how they were feeling. The girl politely said that she would check the list of recent arrivals and let him know. She informed him that only two had survived and asked him to look at the list. He was very happy that his lie had worked and humbly thanked her. Chin managed to get inside the hospital and looked around there. Just then, a scary monster suddenly appeared. It was a monster that grabbed the girl and scaring her very much she started screaming very loudly for help. The conversation was between two girls and one of them angrily said that it was just a small injury and she should not have come here. And as it turned out, this monster grabbed one of the girls who was talking. The monster's tentacles touched every corner of the hospital. He kept saying that the injury was minor and would heal quickly. The man standing next to it couldn't understand what was happening. And realizing that it was moving straight towards them, he tried to protect the doctors so that they could protect the injured. But it was useless. The tentacles were so strong that they grabbed everyone who got in their way. Chin didn't understand what was happening or why there was a monster in the hospital, but Feather only ordered him to run. What the hell is this? Tentacles of the monster did not end, they became more and more, another person caught in these nets. And it seemed to be Chin. The monster didn't leave him out and grabbed him like everyone else. And then a teleportation portal appeared. The people there were asking a lot of questions. No one could understand what this place was because they were in the hospital and were treated. Are they still in the city or not? One of them noticed something up ahead. A bright light shone sharply in front of them. The system window appeared in front of Chen again. It said that the meaning of the tales began to change as soon as people became adults. All the people who had arrived had been located and a tash would be issued soon. The mission was called Frog in Crisis. All the terms of the upcoming mission were written there. Each of the people couldn't understand at all what was going on and how they were even going to pass this stupid test. It looks like there might be a portal in the hospital and it seems to be out of order, but could this be a new portal? Pero suggested that Chin observe for a while before drawing any conclusions. As many as 12 people had been captured in this ordeal, 10 of them were seekers and two were regular people. Some of them were already eager to get started as soon as possible. Among the Seekers, the strongest ones were two level 9 and one level 8. Looking at their strength, they would be able to accomplish this mission without difficulty. Everyone began to quarrel amongst themselves. The girl was just an ordinary person, and she didn't want to perish. But the man in blue was excited about the free and unexpected portal intending to start passing the test as soon as possible. These two brothers wished to take all the loot for themselves. They had no interest in anything around them. Lone seekers are a significant risk that leads to a lot of team losses in random groups using portals not under guild control. This was a lone wolf, and he was sure that he had to pass this test alone, for he was clearly not used to acting in a team. The girl with pink hair wanted to make a truce and go through this together. Chin tried to warn the others about the dangers, which could be in the portal. After all, the portal came out of nowhere and they didn't know any information about it. Pero tried to warn Chin that he should not cross these seekers. But it was too late, they had captured him, for they were not going to give the reward to anyone. But Chin was only trying to tell them to be careful and not to endanger others just for their own personal goals. They were very angry and thought that an ordinary level 4 seeker was going to lead the mission and take all the rewards for himself. One of them suggested to his brother to just take Chin down. The two guys didn't seem to understand at all what Chin was trying to convey to them. They had enough power to destroy him. The girl tried to stop them. And one of the brothers with a smirk thought destroying Chin was a great plan. But then suddenly a lone wolf stopped him, and he was in complete agreement with Chin's words. A dialogue went on between them, 
and they realized that those guys looked terrifying. Chin thanked the man and the man in turn informed him that he just wanted to pass the test with caution. The girl with pink hair moved towards them. She started yelling furiously at Chin and informed him that often in unregulated portals people were willing to destroy each other for prey and he shouldn't do that next time. Chin had to apologize because he clearly wasn't thinking of such a thing at that moment. And that was the real truth because if no one had come to his aid now, anything could have happened to him. These two were completely ordinary people and they just wanted to stay alive because they were very much afraid of the monsters in the portals. Chen asked them to stop worrying because this was just the background that accompanied the portal for now. They all need to stay calm and not get into conflict. The most interesting theory about the portals was the mirror dimension hypothesis. A portal is the same as a mirror, it projects the human world just in a different space. All they had to do was complete the mission. And it shouldn't be difficult, because almost everyone here is an adventurer. This girl was not going to pass this test. She really didn't want anyone here to drag her into it. She and her family had a high status in the Gold Consortium, and she was hoping to be found soon. Chin wondered if the strategy of two lone wolves could have been a good strategy to pass the test. It was the princess in the guise of a frog. The system window lit up and announced that the mission would start right away. Everyone who was there was waiting for further action. Some of them were very scared, but it seemed they had no choice. People from other worlds had been summoned to save the frog from danger. The reward was a kiss from the princess. The wolf cub fell to the floor and couldn't believe they would succeed. The doctor at the hospital was very frightened. The frog suddenly became very big and towered right over them. They were very angry because they couldn't become leaders in this challenge. Chin wanted to save the humans from annihilation. The player's hostility was detected in the system. Chin was very angry because this system was equipped with absolutely no rules, because now another instant human annihilation was about to happen. How would they actually be able to deal with this? Everyone started to run away. The girl tried to stop them. This system was destroying everyone without hesitation. So if even the seeker started running away, the humans obviously didn't need to wait. With each passing moment, the situation for the brothers was getting more and more interesting. Chin was really pissed off that the system was doing such actions and destroying people for nothing. He began to understand the rules of this system. They consisted of obeying the princess and completing the mission. Pero realized and explained to Chin that this was not just an ordinary portal, it was an ancient test of the gods and Chin thought it was something similar to a trial in the underworld. But in the underworld, the system can work stably because the deity is still there. But here it was not like that at all. It was called the fairy world, and it had a broken deity, and that was why the system was not complete and might have bugs. They weren't sure if what was happening could end. Pero explained that since it was also a divine trial, the underworld system had no right to invade there, and Chin only needed to worry about himself first. Chin realized that with such stupid rules around, lawlessness would just start all around and it would be a complete failure. He angrily ordered everyone to calm down, but people didn't understand, they didn't want to die here. Chin tried to explain to them that if they left now, they would die. Because there was a rule, never go against the system, and if everyone left and did not fulfill the mission, it could only mean one thing, doom. But the players didn't want to trust a level 4 seeker, because they couldn't know for sure that his conclusions were correct. Chin told her that those who didn't want to do the mission could leave, and at the same time the remaining ones would check Chin's strategy. The girl with pink hair supported Chin. After all, it was clear even to her that the dungeon was forcing them to complete this mission. She told Chin that she thought he was very brave and by saving everyone he was doing a very good deed. 
and then Chen realized that this girl had a very good understanding of what was going on in the dungeon. People were very scared, and did it really get to them that they had to accept and fulfill this mission? This girl thought that if Chen was a seeker, then he should definitely have his own opinion. And if her father found out that something had happened to her, he would destroy everyone involved. And suddenly on the system window she saw that all the players took part, and if they didn't, they would all be destroyed. And Chen was right because he saved them. And suddenly something started to happen. Everyone was surprised because they thought it was safe to stay here. But that was just the beginning of the mission. In the mission, they had to save the Queen Toad from the crisis and defeat the insect army. Chin was completely deep in his thoughts. Pero was worried because he didn't know if Chin would be able to pass this test. Last time, he didn't have the strength and most people didn't survive the trial. But this time, the portal had drawn in even ordinary people. And by gathering all his strength in his fist, he will be able to protect these people from being killed in vain because now he has powerful forces.